fight, but I can't see. You're not fighting the drug itself. You're fighting what's behind the drug. I can't fight what I can't see. We know what drugs does to us physically. We know how it destroys families. We know how it emotionally destroys us. And we know how it financially destroys us. But there's a root to it. And the root is demonic. I'm tired of fighting what I can't see. You're fighting evil spirits. And they want to use you. And when you die, they go to somebody else. I can't fight what I can't see. If you don't get the weapons, you're going to lose. But if you watch this video, you'll be able to understand and recognize who you're fighting and what you couldn't see before. And you'll get set free if you watch this video. And you'll stay set free. Learn how to maintain it. But you know, we can't fight. But we can't see. When you were using and you heard the voices, and you saw the shadows out of the corner of your eye, those were real. Who do you think told you to go use? Who do you think told you and convinced you that it will be all right once you just use a little and you can make it up? false promises. Now, if there was an organ in me and you that this desire came from, well, you know what? You and I would be the first ones to run to a doctor and say, hey, take this organ out and put it on the shelf so that these desires and these feelings would go away. But it's not an organ. It isn't physical. Not that there isn't a physical effect, but the bottom line is it's spiritual. But I want you to know that there is a way and there is health and I'm stretching out my heart to you and my hand to you. There's no coincidence that you're watching this video. Obviously, you need help. What I want to bring you today is information to free you. The choice is yours. Every day, we make a choice. And today, I'm asking you to make the right choice. Sometimes choices don't feel good, but you know, you know the right thing to do. Because you're either going to end up in jail your choice. Here. In a grave. It's your choice. Do you want to end up here? Or here. In a park. And being normal again. It's for you. And you can do it. Make the choice today. Hi, my name is Guy Ionello. I'm an ex-drug addict and alcoholic. You've gotten this video today for a specific reason. Maybe you feel like you're fenced in, caged in, bound by drugs or alcohol. Maybe you're a mother that occasionally drinks or uses drugs on the weekend. Or you're a father, or you're one of the children, or you're a businessman. It doesn't matter what you are. Drugs and alcohol is not a respecter of person. Even if you use a little bit, if it has control over you and you don't have control over it, something's not right. You are fenced in. You are bound. Some of you are sitting there in guilt and condemnation. Some of you have lost your families, your loved ones. You've lost your jobs. You may be in a hospital right now. You may be in jail right now. You may be on the street and somehow you're watching this video. You may be in a drug program. It doesn't matter where you are and it doesn't matter who you are. Drugs is a killer. Now, I was a drug addict for over 20 years and in the drug world. I tried to play the big man and ended up turning into a beggar. Because by using drugs, it always gives you big ideas. It always has many promises of a better life and a better feeling. But when you wake up the next day, you're back to that same torment. And one of the great things that we need to have is freedom. 
I've been in and out of jail. I've had people look at me as like the black sheep of the family, you know? And maybe you're there right now. But there is freedom. There truly is freedom. You have to come to a point right now where it's not that you want to get off the drugs and alcohol. Yes, you do. But you know what? You've got to have a desire to want a whole new life. Because if you don't want a whole new life, you'll never get off the drugs and alcohol. I used to get great freedom riding my bike. There's something wonderful and a great sensation about the wind blowing through your hair and the wind blowing off of your body. It's different than driving in a car because you're compact. But on the bike, there is a freedom. And that freedom and sensation I was looking for to get off the drugs and alcohol. I was desiring that freedom. The problem was, when I got off the bike, I was still bound by the drugs and alcohol. But I can tell you today that when Jesus Christ came in my life and freed me from the addictions and the desires of alcohol and drugs, I can get back on this bike and ride and be free. And when I get off, I'm still free. There's the difference. Ride with Jesus today. Accept him. Walk in the freedom that he has for you and he paid the price for you on the cross so that you can ride whether you're on the bike or off. I got to a place where I began to cry out to God because nothing in the natural realm helped me. And I believe in God, didn't know who he was. And I began to cry out to him saying, help. In fact, when I used to get high around the people I was with, I used to, get before I would take a hit, I would say, God, if I die, take me home. Because see, I knew I was going to either end up dead or in jail. I didn't know if I was going to end up free, but I started crying out to God for freedom. And he answered my prayer. But one of the things he wanted me to do was to show him. How bad do you want it? Are you willing to do whatever it takes? And I went and checked into a detox place. And I had no problem detoxing. And when I came out and I looked around my house, I realized I'd lost everything. I pawned everything. It was like a shell there. And I was sitting in one of these meetings and I wanted to share something. I wanted to share an experience that I had. And a voice came to me and said, share it with me. So I did. And the voice returned and said, look around the room and tell me how much more spiritual growth you'll get. And I looked around and I realized I wasn't going to get any more. And I said, none. And he said to me, seek more. So I was driving home in my car and a thought came to me. And the thought was about reading the Bible. And I said, nah, I never read the Bible. I don't know anything about the Bible. It's got too many these, those, and thous in it. Well, when I got home, I asked my roommate, I said, you know, I think I need more spiritual growth. And he handed me a Bible. And he invited me to come to a service with him. So I did. And people were worshiping God and praying in this funny language and so forth. And at first, I was a little afraid. But I said, what do I got to lose? I've done everything. So I ended up going to church with my friend. And I remember the preacher saying, you need to ask Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior into your heart. And he said it specifically to me, it felt like. Well, I didn't know anything about Jesus. I remember being, as I brought up, I was an altar boy and I, you know, but I never believed that you could have a relationship with God. And I didn't understand the spiritual realm. So I went home, I took a nap, I got up and I have an 80 pound Doberman dog. So I went down to the pool and I got this Bible and I laid it down next to me and my dog was walking around the pool. And I remember that this preacher said to me, you need to ask Jesus in your heart. So I said, look it. I said, God, if you're out there, because <laughs> I don't know. You know, because see, I began to reflect on how many people I hurt in my drug, my drug use, my drug dealings, how many families I destroyed. All of these things began to affect me. So I said, God, I'm sorry. I, I, and, and, and I was told today to ask Jesus in my heart. So I said, please forgive me and Jesus, come and take this life over. 
when I did that, something happened within me. And I began to weep and cry, knowing that there was true repentance manifesting in me. And as I began to weep and cry, this cloud covered me. And I was blinded. And I began to feel this comfort and love. And this love, I began to realize, was everything I was looking for in the drugs and the money and in the women. And I realized it was God I was looking for. And as it, he began to fill me more and more with his love, now I can't see, I'm blinded. This funny thing started happening to where this, it was like pop of a, a soda bottle just flew out. And I began to pray in this other language. And, my, and the language just started going, Maharamiyala Makia. And I started praying in this other language and my hands went straight in the air. And I was getting higher and higher and higher and filled with this love to where finally I realized if this is what death is about and walking on the other side in the true spiritual realm, I want it. I mean, I was willing to let go of everything. Everything. You got to remember, I was married eight years and divorced for three years. I lost my wife, children, everything. But all of a sudden, nothing mattered. And I found what I was looking for and I met my Heavenly Father. And I said to him, God, if this is death, I want it. When I said that, that cloud lifted from me and I sat up. And there was this beautiful beaming lights in front of me. And the first thoughts that came to me was pick up the Bible. And as I began to pick up the Bible, of course, it was God. He knows where I'm going to. I mean, he said to me, speak what's in the Bible. And I began to speak what was in the Bible. And I realized he was telling me that the Bible is true. And that's his voice. And as I began to speak this, and I laid the Bible down a couple times, and he encouraged me to pick it back up and read it. Now, my Doberman dog started by, uh, barking really bad. And as I heard this rattling sound, and I looked over to the side, and I realized that there was a snake laying next to me, and my dog was trying to fight it, but my dog's head was moving so fast that the snake couldn't get to it. And I looked at these beaming lights, and I said, what do I do? And the next thing I know, this voice comes out of my mouth, it was my voice, and my hand went towards this black, thick snake that was a serpent, and said, from the love of God, I curse you, Satan. Now, I've never said that before. And this snake curled up and moved away from my dog. And I realized that that thing was in me, and God revealed to me that that serpent was in me from using the drugs. He let me know that the ruler of this world is known as Satan. And under his rule, he deceives us. He lies to us. And his whole purpose is to kill us so that we never find the truth. There's three things that the powers of darkness don't want you to know. They don't want you to know the truth of the word. They don't want you to know that they're involved in your life. And they don't want you to have communion with God in the spirit. So after I communed with the Lord for a while, he began to impart on me all of these truths. And all of a sudden it was like he just left and it was like the natural realm split open and then all of a sudden it shut and he was gone. And let me tell you, I was never the same. Every desire to use drugs, lust, everything was gone. Everything. In fact, when I got back home, I ran and talked with my roommate and he looked at me and he said, man, what happened to you? <laughs> and he knew that I just had an encounter with the Lord. Now, you got to understand something. I'm not religious. I'm free. And the powers of darkness want to bind us to lies and deceptions. You know, the greatest weapon that the devil has is deception. If you don't know, that's where he's at. And he doesn't want you to know the truth. He doesn't want you to know the truth of the, world, of the word of God. And he doesn't want you to know that he's a part of your life. And he certainly doesn't want you to commune and pray with God. But I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you that it wasn't until I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior that something happened to me. Okay, let's go a little bit deeper. Follow me to the chalkboard. Remember we talked about the two realms. There's a spiritual realm. and a natural realm. And the one thing that we've been discussing is that we're living in a natural realm, but what our fight is is spiritual. That's why you couldn't fight what you couldn't see.
because in true reality, you're a spirit and I'm a spirit, but we're just in these flesh suits. And one day these flesh suits are going to leave and we're going work back where we came from as long as we're right with God. Now, let's go a little bit even further. Because we've been talking about the spirit realm, and we've been talking about what we can't fight, what we can't see, I'm going to use a little illustration. Let's say you're this house. I'm going to put a little feet on here. And let's say that um, in this house is your spirit. And because we're not fighting flesh and blood, what happens is these spirits that are out there want to access you and want to use you. Now, if I was to use a tree as a spirit, let's just say, uh, here's a tree. And we're going to recognize this tree as a spirit, a demonic spirit. You know, if you were to walk up to a tree and you were to see oranges around that tree, you would say, well, this tree's an orange tree. If you were to walk up to a tree and see grapefruit, you'd say it's a grapefruit tree. Well, in other words, what I'm trying to explain to you is that the fruit of the tree determines what kind of spirit it is. So if this tree has fruit around it that has, let's say, drugs, cocaine, whatever it is, we would call it a drug tree, wouldn't we? We might even call it an addiction tree. If it has cigarettes around it, we would call it a nicotine tree. If it has cancer around it, we would call it a cancer tree. But what we're saying is the fruit that's around this determines what kind of tree it is, or the fruit that's around it determines what kind of spirit it is. Is everybody with me? So if there are fruits around this tree right now, and if there are fruits around your tree right now, that you're using drugs, that you're drinking, because alcohol is the same thing, you know, people get confused that they think alcohol is different than drugs. It's the same thing. And if there is alcohol, if you're drinking, if you're drugging, whatever it is, what's happening is you're feeding that, this spirit right here, whatever it may be. And this spirit is in you. And that's why you must take the drugs or the alcohol. Now, some people think that, well, you know, um, I only do it occasionally. I do it on weekends. But you've got to understand that spirit is still there. Some people say, well, you know what, I'm really not an addict. Well, then you know what, then don't drink over the weekend and try and stop for a little while and see what happens. You know, these spirits are no respecter of person. They want to use you, enter you, kill you, and then go to somebody else. And if you think that you can just do a little bit here and there and then get away with it, you can't because eventually these spirits want a full course meal and they actually get fed in you. They get fed. They get, these evil spirits get fed by emotion. And drugs cause an emotional, emotional manifestation to where all of a sudden you're fearful, you're angry, you're drugs, whatever it may be. There's an, a, a, an area in an arena where these drugs, these drugs are feeding these spirits. If I was to put cat food on my front lawn, I would draw all kinds of cats, wouldn't I? Well, these drugs draw demonic activity. Yes, there is a physical aspect of it, but once you get rid of the spirit, the physical aspect will heal quickly. You know, I minister in the jail a lot, and one of the things that happens is when the guys come in or women come in, most of the time, after a couple of days, they don't know, no longer have a desire for drugs or alcohol or cigarettes. The desire is gone. You know why? The spirit left. Can't get fed. <laughs> That ought to be a good revelation to you about your spirit realm, right? So these spirits want to get fed. People who are involved in pornography, it's the same thing. Lust, perversion. Remember, your spirit and I'm a spirit. And one day we're going to leave this flesh body and we're going to enter our eternal realm. The word drug, which comes from a word called a Greek word known as pharmakos, means black magic, witchcraft, and sorcery. Black magic, witchcraft, and sorcery. So the whole time you've been doing the drugs or drinking, you've been actually under the authority of Satan. So remember what I shared with you about the soul and the flesh. 
which has been under the ruler of the world, Satan. So to come out from under his authority, there's something that we had to do. Because we're not fighting flesh and blood, right? We're fighting powers of darkness. We're fighting evil spirits. So how many times have you thought, and, and just to reflect on your memory here for a minute, what about the times when you, uh, when you knew you didn't want to do it? You didn't want to use it anymore. You were tired of it. You knew it was destroying you, your family, and everything else. But this voice would come and say, well, just one more time. You'll be all right. How many times have you been lied to? Or how many times have you lied to someone conning them, thinking that you were conning them, but you were the one being conned? Thinking that these thoughts were your own thoughts. But you know what? They weren't. They were voices that you were hearing. Those shadows that you were he seeing out of the corners of your eye. The torment. The guilt and the, and the condemnation the next day. And of course, and the desire to want to get high again. Why? Because we've been led by our soul and our flesh, and those demonic spirits have been dwelling in me and you. We're made up of three parts. And in these three parts, we have a spirit. We have a soul. And we have a body. So, here's our soul. And our body we'll call flesh. Now, the whole time that you and I have been on this earth, we've been led by our soul. Our soul is made up of our mind, our will, and emotions, things that you feel. Our flesh is made up by certain senses that we have, you know, on the outside. So you and I in this whole world, because when we are brought up into this world, we have been led by what these two things are, our soul and our flesh. We've been led by what we see, what we feel, what we think, what we assume, and what we desire. But the whole time, our spirit man has, has been dormant. So our spirit man needed to be awakened. It needed to be what we call born again. So when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the seed of God goes into your spirit. When you ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit and baptized with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes over and bursts this seed and... You become born again so that you're no longer led by what you feel or what you see, but your spirit man is now taking dominion over your soul and your flesh. That's what they mean by born again. See, your spirit man is what communes with God. Your soul is what interprets what God is saying, and your flesh is what does the work so that you have dominion over it. So what happens is because now you are born again and with the seed of God and you are now a child of God, what you need to do is constantly feed your spirit man. Just like you feed yourself in the flesh. You have to eat food, right? I mean, nobody can live without water. <laughs> we all need water, don't we? So we have to have food to eat. Well, there is spiritual food, and that's what's so important. You must have spiritual food. So here is your spirit man. This is you now, born again, child of God, and you need to feed and strengthen this. And that's why the Word of God, the Bible, is known as meat. <laughs> and the Spirit of God is known as water. So we need to have the Word of God and the Spirit of God to continue to sustain and maintain your spirit, man, to stay strong. So now as you are become born again and you're feeding and watering your spirit, man, you know what happens? You actually become a tree of righteousness. <laughs> yeah, you do. You become a tree of righteousness. <laughs> Where you used to be the black sheep of the family, you're going to now become the head of the sheep of the family. Where you were the foolish one, the rejected one, the one that was hurt, now you're going to become somebody. You know why? Because you were predestined to be somebody. You weren't predestined to use drugs. God predestined you to be in the image of his son, Jesus. And you know what else happens? I mean, it's wonderful because now <laughs> you are now a joint heir of Christ. You have an inheritance, and you've already started your eternal life. 
Even though that your flesh is going to die and go back to the earth, you already have an eternal life. Because, see, there's two realms. There's the eternal realm and there's a temporary realm. And you and I have been living in a temporary realm under the authority of Satan, the ruler of this earth, and now you're no longer under his authority because you are born again and now you're bearing fruit of righteousness good fruit of righteousness where people are going to look at you and you're going to become a sign of one or to others and they're going to want to know what happened with you. So that's why it's so important to get plugged into a good spirit-filled church. Like I shared before, go to places where they're casting out devils, laying hands on the sick, praying in the spirit, praying in tongues, where the spirit of God is moving because you know what? You've got to stay strong because you serve the devil and he don't want to let you go. He thinks that you're still his child, and you're going to be attacked still, but you're going to have the power of God to say no, because you can never outrun a devil, but you got to turn around and fight him. So as you get plugged into a church, a local church or a ministry somewhere, they're going to teach you the weapons of God. Now, if you were to go outside with a gun, right, and you were to be attacked by a bunch of people, and you have this gun in your hand, but you don't know how to use it to protect yourself, you're going to end up getting beat up or killed. Well, that's what happens in the spirit realm. The Lord says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So we need to have knowledge. Knowledge is truth that becomes weapons for me and you. Now, we do have tapes that we give with this video package. And there are some specific prayers that we want you to start praying. Because there are certain things that are brought down the family line. There are things what we call ancestral curses, self-imposed curses, even soul ties. People used to hang around with. And one of the things that we're going to encourage you is to not go back to the same people, places, and things. You've got to ask yourself, do you want to just get off of the drugs and alcohol? You won't. And don't think that alcohol is okay. Did you ever drive by... Uh, a bar or something and it says food and spirits well they weren't kidding <laughs> there's food and spirits unfortunately there are demons in there <laughs> yes alcohol draws demonic activity doesn't it so don't be swayed even even um, uh, prescription drugs you can abuse those though you become addicted again in fact there are a lot of people who are addicted to prescription drugs because remember the word drugs be means black magic witchcraft and sorcery and it can be abused, can it? Now, I'm not telling you to throw out all your medication, I'm not, especially if you're diabetic or something like that. You must see a doctor. But I'm telling you that Jesus sent his word. He paid the price for me and you, that we can be healed and delivered. And he wants to get rid of those demons that have been hindering you. So that you can be joyful, so that you can have a life, sustaining life by eating the word, right? And drinking the spirit. There's nothing greater than praise and worship in the Lord. Now remember, you're not alone. There are many of you, <laughs> and there are many of those like myself that have become born again who are willing to help. You're not alone. And please, one thing. Don't go back. Don't go back and, and as you start getting cleaned up. Don't, don't try and fix everything right away. Let God build your house. He'll restore the families in his time. He'll restore the jobs. He'll restore everything. But you do it. You, you, you let God do it. And you continually stay surrendered unto him. And you'll find that he is faithful to complete what he has started. Now, if you're truly sick and tired of being sick and tired, I want to pray with you. Would you repeat after me? Holy Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And I ask for your forgiveness, for your mercies, and your grace. I know I hurt a lot of people, and I know I did a lot of things that were wrong before your eyes. I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior and as my Lord. I ask that you'll wash me with the blood of Jesus and forgive me. Fill me with your spirit and empower me to say no to drugs and alcohol and to temptation and bring me peace, joy, and righteousness for your glory in Jesus' name. Now, if you said that prayer, I want to pray for you now. Would you stretch your hands towards me? In the name of Jesus, 
I take my authority and I bind every foul, unclean, seducing spirit and every spirit under the addiction in that individual that's watching this video. And I command you devils from hell to leave that individual and loose him right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, you spirit of addiction, fear and doubt, sickness and disease, I command you to leave that person right now in Jesus' name because the blood of the Lamb come against you in Jesus' name. Now, Father, fill that person with your spirit and guide them in the right path. Visit them and reveal yourself to them in Jesus' name. Now, look, I want you to understand something that it's a continuous walk. Please, get into a church that's spirit-filled where they're casting out devils, laying hands on the sick and praying in tongues. You don't need a dead church. I'm not against dead churches, but you know what? Where you and I have come from, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Get into a Bible study and learn. Don't go back to your old friends. And in your video package, there's two cassettes and there's prayers in there. Start doing them. Let your pastor know when you get there where you've come from so that he can put people around you to help you. Your fight isn't over. It's continuous. The powers of darkness have been given up on you. They'll be back. And they're going to send anyone they can. And one thing, don't try and reconcile your family. Let God reconcile it. Let things go. You do the right things. And God will restore what the devil has stolen. Remember, it's a whole new life. Start walking in it. Don't look behind but continue to look ahead because you're walking with Jesus. Remember, you can't fight what you can't see. And now is the time to learn to know who you're fighting so you can get into the spirit and fight the spiritual things and not be deceived by the powers of darkness. It's just beginning. You can start a whole new life today. Get on board and ride with Christ. And may God bless you, keep you, empower you, and lead you in Jesus' name. Amen.